as you can see, I have a new background today, so guess where I am? Well, actually, it doesn't really matter where I am because I am not in Japan. Before I get into this video, I wanted to give you guys a little update on the Japan situation, which I decided to officially push my term to July of 2022. As of me recording this, students, workers, business travelers, and family members are actually allowed to enter Japan, so hooray, we did it! However, there is still the entry cap of 5,000 people per day being let into the country, so that includes Japanese citizens and re-entries as well, which makes it a bit more difficult for me to gauge if I'm actually going to be able to get in. And so because of that and other personal reasons, I decide to just push to July. At this point, I'm just really excited to go to Japan, even if I have to wait until summer to do so, but Crossing fingers that the borders are going to stay open this time and that we're not going to get another variant that's going to break all my plans. So with that update out of the way, let's get into the topic of today's video. So over the last decade of my life, I've pretty much been involved with anime and Japan and Japanese culture. Holy shit, it's been 10 years. Anyways, and ever since I had an interest in Japanese culture, I obviously also was interested in the language. So I started learning Japanese when I was around 14 years old. And learning Japanese was always like one of my hobbies that I just did on the side whenever I had time to do so. So when I was in class, I would just, you know, scribble in my notebook some hiragana, katakana, and that was always a lot of fun to me. And so over the years, I've tried many different ways of studying Japanese, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So if you'd like to learn Japanese, but you don't really know where to start, or if you have been learning for a while, but the method you've been using doesn't really work for you anymore, here are my experiences. So self-study is essentially just you teaching yourself, and you can do that with internet, resources, or textbooks. When I was in high school, whenever I had a free minute in class, or when I wasn't paying attention, I would just scribble hiragana and katakana into my notebook, and that really solidified my understanding of those two alphabets, and since then, I haven't really had to study them anymore. And what I did back in class too, because I was really into Japanese music and mostly anime openings, I would just take an anime song, and write out the entire lyrics of the song in hiragana. That was great practice, and if you're trying to learn those alphabets, you should try it. So self-study, I think, is great in the beginning when you have no knowledge of Japanese yet and you're just trying to get started. And the books that I used for self-study were mainly this one and... Where is it? This one! <laughs> so the Genki books are a staple of Japanese language learning, and these books essentially have everything that a beginner of Japanese learning wouldn't want to have. They teach you how to write hiragana and katakana, basic grammar lessons, and also lots and lots of vocabulary that I obviously had to learn. A nice thing about the book, which is why I think it's good for beginners, is that the exercises are described in English, which just makes it a lot easier than if you have to decipher everything in Japanese from the get-go. For kanji practice, I used this book in the beginning. It has the 103 most basic kanji characters, and you can just practice them as much as you want, essentially. Here's how it's written, and then you have your own practice area. And with textbooks, you can't really go wrong anywhere. As long as you buy one that's for beginners, you'll probably be fine. But at some point, Japanese can get very complicated, especially as you delve deeper into the grammar. That was my biggest issue as well, because I speak German and English, and those languages have nothing to do with Japanese, so I had no idea about the grammar. So that's when I decided to join a class at my local university. a bit of a weirdo here, but I love class settings. I just love the feeling of being taught something by someone who knows more than you and you can just absorb the knowledge. Which might also be the reason why I'm so excited to go back to language school. And the first time I went into a Japanese language class, I really felt like I was a bit closer to my dream of going to Japan at some point. And at this point, I already had learned so much on my own that I was so far ahead that the professor just told me to skip the first semester and come back in the second semester. So you can definitely get a lot done in self-study. But the class really solidified my knowledge about Japanese basic grammar. My teacher back then was this really nice Japanese lady who immigrated to Austria, and having someone there who speaks the language natively, who can explain all the things to you that you might not be sure about, makes all the difference. Reading something in a textbook really is not as effective as someone explaining it to you, in my opinion. But that obviously also depends on what kind of learner you are. The only downside of the class in my mind is that it was too big. There were like 25 people in there and they all had slightly different levels of language proficiency which made it really difficult for us to all kind of do the same things. So obviously the teacher had to kind of navigate around that and adapt to the level of the weaker students in the class. And that's not really that ideal if you're someone for example who likes to learn faster. So if you really don't like big classes because of that reason and you have the resources, which I never really had so I never tried this, Maybe private tutoring is for you. So 
this is the one method I can't really say much about because I've never actually tried it myself. But all of the friends who have been in private tutoring for Japanese really liked it a lot. Having a teacher who focuses only on you and your difficulties with a language can be an enormous advantage. And from what I've seen, people who do private tutoring versus language class usually advance way faster. I would only really seek out private classes though once you've got the basics down. It can take some time to really understand the basics of a language, but once you're in the flow, it's pretty easy to figure out by yourself. You just need to take the time and then you can move on to a class or a private tutor if you wanna learn more advanced Japanese. And by the way, free resources. Apps are another great way of studying Japanese, mostly for free. When I was younger, I studied a lot with apps. I had multiple kanji apps on my phone, um, vocab apps, I used Anki, I used Wanikani, and all of these are really helpful. I can especially recommend Anki if you wanna check that out. There are mixed opinions about learning with Duolingo on the internet, but I think it's actually a great way to get started. I still use Duolingo here and there, but in my experience as an advanced learner, it's not really ideal. These days I pretty much only use it to keep my brain exposed to Japanese. Because even if I only do one Duolingo exercise a day, that kind of keeps reminding me of vocab and structure, so that's pretty much all I need it for. But if you want even more exposure to Japanese, there's only really one way to get that. There is no better way of learning a language than being surrounded by it constantly. And I made the exact same experience when I first went to Japan. Being in Japan, I was constantly exposed to the language. So whenever you're at a restaurant or you're going shopping or you're going out with friends, there's always Japanese. And since I also went to language school there, which is in my opinion, the best way to learn the language ever, my language skills just grew exponentially. Back then I was also sharing a room with a Japanese girl, which really ingrained certain phrases into my brain, stuff like, can I use your hair dryer or can I turn off a light? That stuff is just ingrained in my brain forever. And in my mind, that's really how you access your long-term memory when learning a language. You learn it and then you use it right away. That is true for vocabulary, for grammatical structures, even for kanji. There was one time I had terrible canker sores in Japan. And so I had to figure out the kanji for canker sores and remember that so I can go to the pharmacy and get some canker sore medicine. I will never forget that kanji ever again. By and large, going to Japan was the best thing I could have ever done for my language skills. Language school was so much more enjoyable than the course I took back at home as well, because for one, the class was a lot smaller. It was only like seven people. And the other thing was that we all came from different countries, so we didn't really speak each other's languages, which meant that we were forced to essentially speak Japanese. The teachers also didn't really speak English to us. Whenever they explained a new concept, they did so in Japanese. And I think as soon as you are forced to use a language, you will be much, much faster in learning it. Of course, this is a rather expensive thing to do, but if you have the resources, you should definitely consider it if you really want to be serious about learning Japanese. And as a little bonus, I want to talk about one more method of studying Japanese. So, anime. While I absolutely adore anime myself, I do think you have to be very careful if you're trying to learn Japanese through watching anime. But I also don't think it's right to say that you can't learn any Japanese with anime either. That's not true. If you're watching in Japanese with English subtitles and you are a rather advanced learner already, you know basic sentence structures and you know basic vocabulary, it can be actually very useful. Because imagine you're watching an anime and you understand the sentence, but there's like one word you don't know. And in the subtitles, you understand the sentence as well. You can put two and two together, essentially. You can figure out what the word is. While I think you should be really careful with this one because you don't really want to end up you know, sounding like a shonen character. There is a lot of value in being able to understand vocabulary in anime and connect it to the translation and the subtitles. So even now, when I hear a Japanese word or phrase that I haven't learned yet, there is a good chance that I've heard it before in anime. So if I can recall that, I can usually put two and two together and figure out what it means. So although I wouldn't try to learn Japanese just through anime, there is absolutely no harm in picking up some vocab as long as you know how to utilize it. And there you have it. These are the different methods for learning Japanese that I tried myself. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.